Live from downtown Bakersfield, 23 ABC News at 11 starts now. Good evening. The public safety power shutoffs of 2019 left many residents in our community without power for days, particularly residents in Tehachapi. 23 ABC's Leslie Gooden attended a town hall tonight in Tehachapi, hosted by Senate Republican leader Shannon Grove of Bakersfield, and has more on what residents thought of the town hall. I'm here in Tehachapi where a town hall just wrapped up that was hosted by Senator Shannon Grove that talked about the many power shutoffs that affected this community. Now many residents spoke and shared their experiences and their frustrations with the senator and also SoCal Edison. And today I was able to speak with some of those residents who say they just want change. Don't think it was answered yet. They got to bring information back. They, are, they say they're going to improve, but everybody says they're going to improve. you got to prove it. <laughs> the crowded town hall took place tonight in Tehachapi, discussing with residents and California Edison about what is being done regarding the many public safety power shutoffs that affected the people of the Tehachapi area. It's just to make sure that the residents feel like their voice is heard and that we listen to what their, their issues are and Southern California Edison comes back with a plan to make sure that the issues that took place in 2019 are not going to happen again. Senator Shannon Grove arranged for several community officials to speak, such as the Kern County Sheriff's Office, the Kern County Fire Department, and most importantly, Southern California Edison. We're, we're in the process of replacing the fuses that are in high fire areas with what we, I won't go the full name, but they're fast, they're, they're fast acting fuses. And we have the ability to electronically control those fuses so that uh, we can we can um, sort of turn them down or turn them up, whichever way you look at. So that in, in high fire conditions, they're going to trip much, they're going to trip quicker at, than they would have under normal conditions. And again, so the, the downside of that is Cal will, t Cal will tell me, you know, we're going to have more outages potentially. Cal Edison shared their future plans moving forward with residents. One of the plans includes is to install a thousand circuit miles of insulated wire by this year. The company also apologized for the communication and notification process, which many residents share that is their biggest concern moving forward. Then, so again, our notification process. I admit, again, I don't want to acknowledge that, that it was not up to snuff uh, in one of the incidents last year. Uh, but again, we're, we're working on, on getting much better at that on both uh, uh, on both ends of it, of, of the not providing notification and then uh, providing notification and that not turning off the power. So During the question and answer portion, some residents shared their continued disappointment with SoCal Edison and asked for safer solutions to the power shutoffs. So I didn't hear any data today of that if we have 3,000 generators running, that that is safer than having electricity on. Based on the comments that you have, and tell me if I'm wrong, do you guys have data that shows that it's safer to have the generators than the power on? And if not, can you get it? I'm not aware of any data that exists. Mm -hmm. SoCal Edison says that they are currently looking to find additional ways to cut down on the cutting off of power to those who may not be directly affected by it in that area, but who share a grid with areas that require a power shutoff. We do it circuit by circuit. So rather than um, shutting off just one air, you know, an entire area, We'll try, we'll try and de-energize we de try and de-energize a, a few circuits and then try and um, get even when we can isolate that to a much smaller level and in the upcoming months they plan to speak to the public again and explain that plan for now in Tehachapi, Los Gooden 23 BC News connecting you and of par as part of its ongoing efforts to further reduce wildfire risks and keep customers and communities safe, PG&E submitted its 2020 wildfire mitigation plan to the California Public Utilities Commission today. The plan expands and enhances the company's co comprehensive community wildfire safety program designed to address the growing threat of extreme weather and wildfires across its service area. The plan will continue expanding key safety work, including new grid technology, accelerated inspections of electric infrastructure, infrastructure and enhanced vegetation management around power lines. PG&E's 2020 plan also includes several changes to make public safety power shutoff events smaller in scope and shorter in duration, all to lessen the overall impact of those shutoffs during times of severe weather and high wildfire risk.
We want to turn now to some breaking news out of East Bakersfield. Kern County Sheriff's deputy searching for a suspect involved in a recent robbery. We want to take you live to the scene right now. Our photographer there, as you can see, a search is still underway. The scene located near Valencia Drive and Niles Street. As we zoom in, you can see there are shining lights. If I am correct, Air One is in the area. That's the helicopter that circulates and shines lights down. But you can see a large presence of KCSO deputies in this area as we've been hearing them go house to house on Valencia Drive looking for this suspect. Now, according to KCSO officials, just before 10 tonight, deputies responded to reports of a person who was robbed near that area. The search is underway for the suspect in the area of Valencia and Rosewood. A portion of Valencia is blocked by deputies as they investigate. This is still a developing story. We'll be sure to bring you any updates as they come in right here and online at turn to 23.com. New developments tonight, a 60 year old American citizen living in the hard hit city of Wuhan has died from the coronavirus. The New York Times reporting that tonight. Few details on the person's death are known. The death is believed to be the first of an American citizen as the deadly virus has claimed the lives of more than 700 people in China. An embassy spokesperson said we offer our sincerest condolences to the family on their loss. Out of respect for the family's privacy, we have no further comment. The United States government has issued a do not travel warning to China. The U.S. has also been attempting to return citizens in Wuhan to the U.S. and keep them under quarantine for 14 days upon their return. The CDC continues to remind the American public that the general risk is low of being, being infected with coronavirus. Now to the race for the presidency. Democratic candidates for the White House under more pressure than ever after a round of caucuses in Iowa. Presidential hopefuls went toe to toe in New Hampshire just days away from the first primary in the nation. Mary Maloney is in Manchester with the highlights. Seven familiar faces took familiar places at the New Hampshire Democratic debate. But after the disastrous Iowa caucuses. So I took a hit in Iowa and I'll probably take it here. The stakes seemed higher than ever. We need to reestablish the rule of law in this country. Pete Buttigieg and Bernie Sanders claiming victory in Iowa, leading the polls in New Hampshire, and Pete well, and feeling the front runner fire. Mayor Buttigieg uh, is a great guy. He's a mayor of a small city who uh, has done some good things, but has not demonstrated he has the ability. The question Others is hoping for a memorable moment. Bernie and I work together all the time, uh, but I think uh, we are not going to be able to outdivide the divider in chief. The next president is going to have to restore the credibility of this country. We the Democratic candidates touching on topics that matter most to people in New Hampshire, like health care. If we do what Joe wants, we'll be spending some $50 trillion on health care over the next 10 years. That's the status quo, Joe. Climate change. Maybe we pool our resources and fight our common enemy, which is climate change. So, and the economy. We're going to have to take Mr. Trump down on the economy, and he's going to beat us unless we can take him down on the economy, stupid. What we have to do is actually get the markets working to improve our family's way of life. With the New Hampshire primary on Tuesday, the time for candidates to stand out to voters is quickly running out. In Manchester, New Hampshire, I'm Mary Maloney. Meanwhile, back here in Kern County, there were a few watch parties held for the debate, including one hosted by those supporting Bernie Sanders. One of the supporters saying she is enjoying the debate and believes Bernie came out strong tonight. Oh, the debate's going great. I feel like consistently Bernie has been supporting a side like he's always done consistently. And I thought the funniest part was when Biden accidentally said mandatory uh, prison, I mean uh, mandatory treatment <laughs> for all people caught. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. And we'll continue to provide you information so that you can make an informed decision this March. The California primary is set for March 3rd on Super Tuesday. We'll have all the information you need on candidates, propositions, and measures on our website, turn to 23.com. Well, it was a nice day across Kern County. Those temperatures were above average with a high of 67 degrees here in Bakersfield. That's six degrees above the seasonal norm for this time of year at 61. And those temperatures are warmer than what we were feeling this time yesterday because we are in the middle of a warming trend and that will be ending tomorrow. So overnight we are going to be in those low 40s, but with those clear skies and calm conditions, a high of 68 degrees tomorrow. So across the region, we will be seeing 
seeing those warmer than normal temperatures, but that is all changing as we head into your Sunday. A system is going to be making its way down from the Gulf of Alaska. This is going to be a cold one, bringing an increase in winds and those below seasonal temperatures return Sunday into Monday. I have more details on the strong winds and the wind advisory that will be in place coming up next. The Bakersfield Police Department has arrested a man who allegedly posed as an Uber or Lyft driver to get women to enter his vehicle so he could sexually assault them. According to BPD, detectives arrested 48 year old Nasef Regheb near 23rd and L streets for stalking, prowling, peeping into a residence, burglary, false imprisonment and attempted sexual battery. The arrest came as the result of three related investigations over the past three years. Last Saturday, officers investigated a prowling incident at a residence in the area of Brimhall Road and Juetta Avenue. A follow up investigation led to the identification as of Regheb as a suspect in that investigation. He was listed previously as a suspect in related offenses reported to BPD and the Sheriff's Office in 2018 and 2019. Certain parts of this uh, had been reported in various ways, but not with the ongoing, not with the, the, the extent that they realized it was as far as the, the ongoing behavior and some of the other behaviors where not only was he trying to get people to come in his car, but actually following people to houses, going into backyards, checking residents. A lot of this came from this investigation that started uh, last weekend. The department said investigators found evidence that showed he posed as an Uber or Lyft driver in an effort to get women to enter his vehicle. On at least one instance, he tried to forcibly kiss one of the female victims after driving her to her home. Regheb is set to be in court on Tuesday. BPD is asking for help identifying any other incidents he may have been involved in. If you have any information, you're asked to call BPD at 327-7111.